It won't always be like this. Mm -hmm. Concern if you sooner than later it'll work in your favor. He's turning around for you. It won't always Good morning, good morning, good morning to my Facebook family and friends. God bless you on this fine morning. I am on Route 85 on my way to an appointment. And the scripture that I woke up with is the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I just thank God for having joy joy unspeakable joy and I realized on today not everyone has that I want to say good morning to my husband Mr. Somerset God bless you um, <laughs> wherever you are at this moment God bless you God bless you may God keep you and continue to heal your body and make ways out of no way I just thank God on today I thank him for waking up in my right mind I was listening to something last night and on YouTube and they were talking about how mental health was going to become such a huge issue and we see it across the United States that people are losing their minds and we used to sing a song in the old church and we used to say um, people are calling wrong right and calling right wrong. We are living in the last days and another big portion or part of what's going on is that people aren't rearing their children. These children are growing up on their own without any kind of foundation that would make them healthy adults. And we have children doing things that grown people are doing. I understand some mothers have children doing things because they're working two or three jobs. That's something that's different. But even with that, a parent who's living like that has to become aware of what's going on and um, I know my husband and I have been rearing our grandchildren for a while and I was saying that I was so happy when my oldest well not my oldest grandson but my grandson that was with us at the time when he's still with us I was so glad when he was getting out of high school because it takes a lot it takes a lot to rear children and when I kept continuing to think about the teachers conferences and the homework assignments and having to meet with the principal and uh, God bless you good morning to you um, it's not an easy job it's not and one thing that I thank God for for, uh, even when Kellogg went for this job that he has currently, the feedback that we got was always about how mannerable my grandson is at 21 and, and how um, people take to him because he has such a compassionate heart and he walks in a way he's quiet but he has a power that resides on the inside of his soul his spirit um, as his grandmother of course I am uh, <laughs> biased but what I do know walking spiritually I see in him the power of the most high God that resides in him and people are drawn to him because he is spiritually a healer 
he's naturally a healer and his heart is so full of compassion as his mother was Sabrina Lord I love that girl and um, his mother was that way she was one who loved and loved dearly and of course she's gone too early too, too, too early and when I think about her funeral and how the downstairs and balcony of this huge church was filled because she touched so many lives and if I could leave a message on today that would be take care of the children and a lot of these children are doing things because technically they have no hope they don't they don't have any hope what they see is a lot of turmoil uh, it could be mother father on drugs it could be family not having enough money uh, maybe it's something that's going on in school and uh, I started this conversation because that's one thing that we my husband and I always did and I thank him for being the type of father he is is that when we picked up our grandchildren or when I got home because he picked the children up when I got home and and we would sit we always had what we call round table discussions for our family and we would ask our children our grandchildren how was their day what happened and that was why and how we understood that when something was going on in the classroom, we understood, no, I'm not saying they, are, they were perfect, but there were things that we knew because of the way that they were reared that they didn't do. They weren't like other children, no. They, and as I told one teacher, um, and they wouldn't lie on him about this or her. Is that they're not gonna curse you out? We don't curse. We that's just something that we I don't, especially I don't do. So therefore, my my children, our children is not coming to class. They're not gonna be picking on somebody else's child. They're not going to um, be cursing at the teacher. Okay, our children are taught to respect an adult. So if they shut down, if you tell me my child is shut shut down, then I know that you said something to them as an adult and knowing that they're not an adult they had to stay in a child's place that they knew was something that my husband or i would handle and handle we did okay and um teachers are human i know they have a difficult job but when it comes to mistreating my child we got an issue and especially when our children are entrusted to you and you feel because you can cause them to feel insecure. You're not going to do that. Not with minds. No, we, we, we're not going to have that. Now, if he needs or she needs to be corrected, that was something that we would do. We did not allow them to think that they could do anything that they wanted to do. They were children. They were to stay in a child's place, but they always had a voice. And I'm telling you, that was key to them coming through school. And I can't tell you how often we were able to detect what was going on in their individual classrooms because these teachers who were doing these things, who were abusing children, because they were, and I'll say it and I have a problem saying it. And I, I mean, my husband and I was known um, at the board, <laughs> we were known. The superintendent knew at any time we would show up. And so it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. And the things that, because um, we will often go in and, and sit also in classes and to see what was going on, it was a reflection that was going on in their homes. So what I'm saying is that those of you, no, they may not be your children even when you're in church. They may not be your biological child, but as mothers especially, and you see another mother, a young mother struggling, give them some time, give them a break, take the children out. 
but we become such a selfish society that we don't do that and I'm not saying it's easy and I'm not saying that everybody wants to do something like that but what I'm saying is that if we're going to save our communities we have to do more we have to be more it takes a village to rear a child it does and you don't know I was I always would share this story and then I'm getting off because I'm really on my way and I remember when we put our grandson Kal in preschool and I remember when we was going into the building they had glass um, windows and the children could see the parents as they would come in and I always remember and it still brings a smile to my face now is that when I would enter in to pick him up the children would get so excited and they would say Kal your grandmama's here your grandmama's here and when I would enter into the room and I would greet each child and they would be so happy just that little thing just that little thing makes a difference in a child's life. And those of you who are going through something, you don't see a way out. Just know that if you hold on to God's unchanging hands, if you take the word of God and apply it to your life, it lets us to know that he will never leave us nor forsake us, ever. That he's going to be with us until the end of this age. Until the end of the world. Use his word. Speak the word of God to your situation. If you're sick, speak healing to your body. Get the healing scriptures. By his stripes. 39. We are healed. Speak that to your body. Speak wholeness to your mind. Instead of sitting there and pondering on the circumstance, ponder on the answer to your situation. The scripture lets us to know, be anxious for nothing. But in prayer and thanksgiving, that's why he gives us instructions. So that we can learn how to come out of whatever it is that we're in. He never fails. We used to sing a song back in the day. God never fails. And I tell you, with all the stuff that my husband and I have been through, all the people that have tried to hurt us and tried to undermine us, with all of that, God stood in the gap for us. And he would not allow us to fall. Remember, people can block you, but they can't stop you. They can't stop you. So as we enter into this last four months of the year, be consistent in your faith with God. And I, I want to let you to know, you know, faith is not positive or negative. Faith is neutral. It is a tool, a spiritual tool. So if you have a negative not mindset, your faith is going to work negatively. If you have a positive mindset, a positive belief system, whatever your, par your, your paradigm is, that's how faith is going to work for you. All right, people. I'm continuing down 85. I should be to my destination in about another 20 minutes. God bless you on this morning. May have a smile upon you. And just remember, continue to look up into Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless you.